I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we are talking reloading dies. That's something that Hornady has been involved in for many decades now. We've got some great dies, and I'm joined by two great guys here. Beside me to my right, Bradney Hardman from Technical Service, and across the table, Ben Searing, Project Engineer here at Hornady. Guys, thanks for sitting down with me today. Absolutely. No problem. No problem. So reloading dies, you know, we're passionate loaders. We're passionate shooters. You know, where a lot of us are competitors, uh, we spend a lot of time at the loading bench. And, you know, a lot of us learn to reload prior to working here at Hornady. And you can't reload anything if you don't have a set of dies. So I've really been drawn to Hornady dies prior to my employment here because that's just what my dad used. That's, that's what dad always had growing up. And, you know, I, I've had some allegiance there. But now that I've, I've been here for a while... I am really impressed at the at the level of precision and quality you get versus how much our dies cost compared to some of the competitors. And we're really a one-stop shop for all your reloading die needs. And that's something that we've prided ourselves on now for, for quite a while. So before we talk about where we're at right now, this goes back to 1971. And in 1971, Hornady purchased the Pacific Reloading Tools Company. And if I'm not mistaken, they were out of? Well, they were out of Lincoln at that time, but I think they originally come out of California. Okay. So we purchased them, and that was our first jump into not just reloading dies, but reloading everything. Well, I mean, we had dies, obviously. Um, dies, the presses, mm-hmm. Pacific Duracrome prize, and all the old blue presses that are people familiar with. Not not the Dillon blue, but the original Pacific blue. Okay. And, yeah, the presses, I think there was even a small scale. Uh, actually, yeah, the the... The original M-frame scale. Correct. Uh, yeah. I think I still have one of those in uh, in my shop, in, in a box somewhere. That'd be that'd be neat to see, because I don't think I've ever seen one other than in pictures. Yeah, it's incredibly accurate. I mean... Sure. Uh, so that was our first jump into reloading dies, and that was the Duracrome line of dies. That was something that we inherited from Pacific, but all in all, not a bad set of dies. No, it's great. In fact, there's a lot of people still using them to this day. Uh, they've last long, like I said, like you said, 1971, um, that's the year I was born. So those dies are 51 years old and they're still using them. So still getting uh, calls, still, still getting calls. We, we don't support the parts for them anymore. We did till we ran out. Wow. Brad, you said you're still taking phone calls, still taking calls, probably get <clears throat> on, on average, probably half a dozen a year, but you know, it's the, the life, life span of those, you know, gosh, for just a decapping pin even. Just yeah. that everything else is fine. Just needed to be capping pin. So that's that's pretty remarkable when you think about that. A, a product, a quality made product, fifty one years old, and people are still putting them in service. And in my dad's at my dad's reloading bench, I know, and I've got a set of them. I've got a set of forty four mag Pacific Duracrome dies. Sure, uh, and he's got a bunch of sets and everything that that he's loaded for three hundred eight light blue plastic case. Yeah, right? yeah, and he's got some red ones too. I'm guessing those are probably from the eighties. Those are a little newer. Yeah. yeah, and they originally started, I think, in a cardboard box. Wow. Yeah. Don't have any of <laughs> that vintage. Yeah, yeah I haven't yeah. seen those. Awesome. So that was that was Pacific, and that was an inherited design. And then you know later we designed what we call our custom grade dies and our, our custom grade new dimension dies. These are the reloading dies that most people are going to be familiar with. I mean, if you go to the big box store, go to Midway USA, something like that, these are the dies you're going to see uh, on the shelf and available. So what is our custom grade new dimension dies? What goes into, uh, let's start with, you know, well, we can talk about them both, the sizing die and the seating die. Uh, and then in some cases we have an expander die in there. But what design features do our dies have now? Well, you know, I believe that, Number one, they probably, the, the full-length die have some of the best polish in the industry. These dies are all polished at a separate operation, um, so our finish is remarkable in the dies. Um, we've evolved from a s- straight spindle. I don't know how many years ago, but we switched it to a zip spindle, which gripped mm-hmm. a little better, okay. less sliding and slipping when you're sizing a case um, that you can you can push past quickly, or you can actually thread it to get your decap pin set right where you want it. Um, I think we feature 
something no no other does is an elliptical shaped expander, um, which helps glide through the neck of that case. Okay, easier so, on pulling it back out. Right, it's more shaped like a football, where a lot of people use a, a ball expander or some other form of expander. Um, the elliptical expander is also good for the wildcatters when they want to neck something up. Sometimes they can take a a 308 uh, Winchester and turn it into their own Wildcat 338 Winchester just by pushing it through the die. Okay, and that um, expander being football shaped enters the case mouth a little bit slower, more gradual, yes. and helps that material get out of the way without wrinkling it or crunching the shoulders. Right, I, I think it also attributes to a little bit less uh, the case neck stretching in the headspace change once your die is set. Okay. Brad, now on the sizing die standpoint from the, from the call volume that you see, um, walk us through real quick, you're setting up a size die for the first time, because that's something that I remember when I was in the technical service division, we did a lot of where people are just a little bit apprehensive of how to do it, but it's actually an incredibly simple process. So how do you set up one of our sizing dies to just give a basic full length resize? You know, everything that I run into is really basic. Uh, just actually starting out of the box, cleaning it. I run into a lot of problems where guys don't think or they clean it wrong. Um, they just, that's one of the basic things you got to do right out of the box. What are you cleaning. cleaning it with? Um, you know, we use our one shot gun cleaner. That's probably the go-to, uh, the one that I've recommended, uh, is a breaker carburetor cleaner. You want something that doesn't leave a residual residue on it. You okay. know, you lubing prop properly, um, getting cases stuck, but cleaning it is probably the first thing I ask, um, uh, setting it up. And, that, and I don't mean to interrupt, but yeah. that's because... All of our dyes are treated before they leave the factory with a rust inhibitor, and that stuff is more like glue. So they have to be yeah. cleaned off so that you as the customer, when you purchase a die set, yeah. buy one without rust on it. Well, it stands yeah. to reason, yeah, you don't want a rusty product right Period. out of the box. And two, you have to use a cleaner that has enough horsepower behind it to break that stuff down and strip it out exactly. of it. Exactly. Absolutely. And while we're on that topic of rust, I wanted to mention, too, when you purchase our die set, that little piece of cardboard in there, don't throw that away. That's a that's a rust inhibiting treated piece of cardboard. Okay, good yep. to know. So you, you go through, you get your set of dies, you bust them out of the box, uh, read the instructions, get them clean though, get them degreased, yep. and then from there, what are you doing for setting the the spindle and the decapping? Um, you run the ram up, hopefully with the right shell holder in there, and thread the die down uh, until it touches. Um, that's that's your minimum threshold to start. I get too many customers that will take it down and then they'll back it off half a turn or you know something. Something small that creates a big issue for them. They can't get it set. But beyond that, you know, if you need to make the adjustments down, small, small increments go a yeah. long way. Bump awesome. that shoulder. And it's, yeah, that it's that simple. Yeah. yeah. And you start with that decap pin. You want to adjust mm -hmm. that just below the bottom of the case. Uh, 180, 200 thousandths or three sixteenths of an inch, we say, um, so that the decaps, but you can't have the elliptical expander inside there make contact with the bottom of the case or it'll just... The force of the press will cause that all to bend. Mm -hmm. um, the reason we say to take it to the shell holders because when I design those dies, they're they're all designed to a SAMI to fit in a SAMI min spec chamber. Um, so we've already included the height of the shell holder with the depth of the die and taken into account the spring back of the brass, so that we set the head space, which right. is what you do when you thread it all the way to the shell holder, mm -hmm. um, so that it will bump and fit into a min spec SAMI chamber. Awesome. And on the zip spindle note, you know, we went from that smooth and the Duracrome to the, the new zip spindles. Usually whatever come across, uh, guys will set those and then they finger tight. And then we're getting calls where they strip the teeth off of the, the, uh, the oh, lock. The spindle lock, lip. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Once you're there, you've got to put your There's wrenches on the flats on and, and mm -hmm. tighten them up. Awesome. So on the size die front, uh, Ben, you mentioned the internal finish is, is impeccable. And that's something that is hypercritical when you're taking a product that doesn't fit and inside this hole and you're shoving it in there Correct. Um, and it's going to take that shape to get resized if that internal surface is got impurities or it's got scratches or this that and the other thing it's going to show up on how it sizes that brass so For sure you said it's a separate process we, we ma manufacture our dies we we ream them out and then we pull them out and we go through a separate polishing stage correct to get that glass-like finish correct and brad as you mentioned without proper lubricant you could stick a case well if you've got a rough internal finish probably doesn't matter how much mm -hmm. lubricant you put yeah. on those size cases you, you may not even stick a case um 
maybe just adding a buildup of brass inside on that surface. Mm. And then you'll start to see it show up on your cases. They look like yep. scratches. Yep. Yep. And it's just brass that is adhered to that surface that, again, has to be polished out. And we do that for folks, too. When they send their die in, we'll polish them out. Awesome. So on the size die front, it goes without saying that essentially you have a really tight chamber, if you will, inside of a piece of steel. That's a, that is a size die. And how straight that is and how perfectly concentric that is with the threads, hypercritical, because otherwise you're sizing brass crooked. And that's going to cause chambering problems, accuracy problems, a whole host of things. And so, you know, we've been in the die manufacturing world for a lot of years now, and we, we know how to do it. And, mm -hmm. and we make a really concentric, true sizing die. Now, switching gears a little bit to the seating die, this is where I really think you get a lot of value for how much our dies cost versus, you know, say a competitor um, with the alignment system. Absolutely. Uh, like you say, Seth, most, most other companies charge a premium for a, an aligning style of seating die. Our seating die actually is built with a, an alignment sleeve and a seating stem rather than a stem just screwed into the top of a, for lack of a better term, a chambered die. Mm -hmm. We have an alignment sleeve that comes down over the neck of the cartridge. All right. Inside that alignment sleeve sits your seating stem. So as you raise your cartridge into it with the bullet, it's all held in alignment. The alignment sleeve, the seating stem, and everything travels until the seating stem makes contact with the adjust screw at the top and starts to seat the bullet. Okay. Um, they also have a crimp feature in that alignment sleeve so that when the alignment sleeve hits a portion in the die body, mm -hmm. it will apply a crimp. Okay. As well as seat the bullet. So that those two pieces, the alignment collar and the seating stem, those are independent pieces, separate of each other, but they work together as a system so that as you seat the bullet, your case and your bullet are held mm -hmm. concentrically and you're starting to push that bullet in true, and that just ends up with a more concentric seated bullet. Yes, right. and that alignment system is in all our dies, not just the premium dies, but the custom grade, match grade, it's in them all. Yeah, so from custom to match to our regular new dimension dies, they all have that system. Absolutely. Now, Ben, you mentioned the crimping. Brad, what are we crimping for? What, what does that gain us? What situations do you need to crimp? Um, easy ones to point out would be if you got high recoil, uh, a bigger cartridge, you know, you crimp into the cantaloupe so you don't have bullets set back, you know, tubular magazine. Mm. Uh, bigger cartridge, 4570 is an easy one to point out, but, um, you know, that's, that's the easy place to start, but, okay. uh, cantaloupe, crimp groove, another name for crimp groove. Yep. And uh, I've noticed on a lot of the big, heavy recoiling Magnum handguns, yeah. I mean, you, you, you kind of have to crimp the bejesus out of those things. And I've, I've seen instances where if you don't have a good purchase on that firearm, the bullets will actually walk out on you under the recoil and then end up jamming up the cylinder. Absolutely. Right. And and for some of those big cannons that we call them the hand cannons, we actually make a four die set. Your typical uh, pistol die set has to be three die. Okay. Um, with the rifle die and the elliptical expander, you have a neck and a place for that expander to go. Well, if you sized with the ring on the bottom of a pistol die with an expander in it, when it pulls back out, the ring's just going to take it right back down to the size. So... You have to use a second die for um, expanding that case mount to accept a bullet. The third die would be your seating die, and you can take th that expanding die puts a little bit of a flare on the case too, so it's easier to seat a flat-based okay. bullet. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why we do a flare. The, the seating die can take some of that flare out, but because you need so much crimp, we've added another die. Uh, you can call it what you will. I call it a profile crimp or a taper crimp die that supports the case walls to get enough crimp on that to hold them. Okay. Um, what happens if you try to get too excessive with crimp while you're seating, you'll, you can buckle the case or bulge the neck or things like that. Mm. Then that requires that other die. So some, many of them like the 500 line ball and, and the 500 Smith and Wesson, they have that fourth die in there to really get a good crimp on those big, big, heavy pan cannons. Okay, so the, the crimp feature that's found in the alignment collar would be classified as a roll crimp, where it's physically rolling the case yes. mouth, and then the profile or the taper crimp, instead of rolling the mouth, it's just squeezing the right. circumference. Is there a time where you want a taper crimp over a roll crimp? Yes. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Cartridges that headspace off the mouth. 
uh, nine millimeter, 45. It, sure. We can't roll crimp those in because we need that length. It, it, that's the, the, the mouth space, of right? the case fits in your chamber and that's what holds it back against your bolt face so that the cartridge can do what it's supposed to and the priming, priming, the firing, firing pin, pin can react with the primer like it's supposed to. So okay. you can't, uh, you can't roll those into a cantaloupe, and you'll notice that most of the bullets at 45 and nine millimeter do not have a cantaloupe on them. Um, so you have to be able to taper crimp those to get rid of that, the bell and to put a little bit of crimp on the case so they don't walk on you. Awesome. So again, that's custom grade, new dimension dies, a ton of features and a ton of precision packed into a really affordable cartridge or a, a really affordable package, uh, now, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the lock and load system, at least for a little bit. Um, you know, these dies, kind of the industry standard, I guess, mm-hmm. for the, the last half a century has been 7 8 14. So the dies are threaded 7 8 14. That's kind of the universal thread pitch for reloading dies. Well, we have a system that allows you to not have to thread in the die every single time you want to put in or take out a die, and that's the lock and load bushing system. Um, growing up didn't have that <laughs> no. and so when i started here at hornady it was like oh my gosh are you kidding me how long does it take you to snap a die in and out two seconds yeah. like that less yeah once you get them set up they're they're set forever and that that technology absolutely fantastic it makes For sure if you're reloading more than one cartridge you want the lock and load bushing system oh absolutely because once you set the die it's set drop it in give it that turn and you're ready for the next load a year down the road if that's what it takes yep. they're really ideal for guys that are doing lots of calibers you know you're going to be rolling from 9 to 40 to 45 oh i'm going to go over to 223 once you initially set them up and move on to the next one mm-hmm. real simple yep very simple absolutely so that's the custom grade new dimension out of the box a ton of value a ton of precision but we have some some additives, if you will. We have some bolt-on mods for these dies, um, and one of which uh, people like to have doesn't necessarily in, increase the accuracy, but that is the the, the micro just stem. Uh, so yeah. on a typical seating die, what do you have? Just a, a big rough, not rough, but yeah, cedar adjust screw. screw. Yeah. yeah, and it you can make some really fine adjustments just based on how fine you thread it in. Yeah, it's an eighteen pitch thread, but you don't have any marks to tell you that that was ten thousandths or that was one thousandths as okay. uh, far as seating depth. So the micro just stem, what's it take to put one of those on there? Is it simple? It's it yeah. very simple. Un- okay. uh, unscrew your cedar adjust screw, the lock ring and the rubber bushing that's underneath it. Mm-hmm. Right on the micro just micrometer, you're done. That easy. That that's easy simple. of a bolt on. That's simple. And that micrometer, it's a true micrometer in that it, it's got one thousandths of an inch increments. Increments, correct. Awesome. So if you're you're working a load up or you use the same seating die for various different loading offerings, different bullets, you can have a reference, write that, document that in your notes, come mm-hmm. back to it and, and know. Or if you're working a load up and you want to back your seating depth down 20 thou or something. 20 marks. That's that simple. Simple. Awesome, and, and a quick and easy bolt-on feature. Another thing we need to talk about as bullet technology is advancing, which is something we're in the business of doing, the stem that actually pushes the bullet into the case mouth, not universal. Close. Not the same. But not the same. So what precipitates somebody needing an aftermarket, not an aftermarket, but a, a, a specific seating stem? You want to well, take this, Brad? Yeah, longer, longer profile, longer ogive. Um, you know, you get a thinner jacket on there. Depending on where the powder column is, how much neck, uh, you know, tension you got on the bullet, mm-hmm. a lot of things go into factor. And, and cosmetically, guys don't like to see a ring on yeah, their bullet because that's what can happen if you have too much pressure or the stem doesn't fit correctly. Right. And Brad probably gets calls on this all the time. Often, is that it, yeah. it? It actually smashes the bullet or marks mm-hmm. marks the bullet. Uh, in the past five years, there's been a huge push for this long range thing. So us at Hornady, you know, we we gave them those high BC, very long ogive bullets. Many of the stems, even if the angle inside the stem to hit on the ogive of the bullet somewhere matched, they weren't deep enough to take that, to oh, take that length. Yep, so yep. they had They'd to be deep. They deforming the tip, yep. huh? Yeah. Absolutely. So our answer with that is that we created stems that match our profile. So you'll see a list of stems that, you know, this, this one's for 153 grain A tip. Because I've actually designed that stem with the ogive inside of it to match the A tip. Mm. Um, 
and many of those stems work for other manufacturers sure. too. We'll recommend them. Say if you have a long BC, you probably should try this one. Um, and we can also make you a custom stem if you want. We'll make it match that manufacturer's profile. Wow, that's a nice service. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and the stem a really affordable small piece and just like changing out to a, a micro just cedar swapping a, a seeding stem is is a non-issue it's yeah it's very simple top, very simple top of the the die dump out the seeding stem and drop in the new one yep degreased yep. properly of course degreased or you can you can uh if you don't use a lock and load bushing you can take it out the bottom okay and then with the little the little retaining ring that we have in there mm-hmm. drop it out the bottom of the die slide it in the alignment sleeve sometime when you put it in the top of the die you kind of got to shake to try to get it to find the center of the hole for the mm-hmm. alignment sleeve. Yep. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. Awesome. Well, and I want to touch on something real quick since we're talking seating dies and what you just mentioned about the seating stem and the alignment color. Bradney, you were you were talking about you have to have degreased dies. You have to do that. And if you don't, and sometimes if you do and you've used them for, you know, weeks, months, years, whatever, if you get to a point where you seat the bullet but the – the stem will actually stick to the top yep. and then, yeah, then you end up, thunk, 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 the, the handle won't go down and it won't go in there. Consent. Well, I mean, it just won't fall in and you got to take it apart and reclean it. And, and the common question is like, honestly, how often do I need to clean these as often as needed? You know, yeah. I mean, that's that simple. You don't remember the last time you reloaded with them. I, you know, go months if, you know, weeks, months w- without reloading. And it's like, man, what a perfect time to take them apart and clean them. So. Yeah. It also depends on the bullet you're using. For those guys using lead bullets with the, uh, with the, uh, oh, whatever wax in yeah. the rings, yeah, you're going to get it dirty pretty quick. Yeah. Um, you're using you know clean copper jacketed bullets or GMX bullets or of the sort. It's probably less often. So ultimately, it's like when you get that question, it's well when you need to clean them. When you notice there's something going on there that doesn't feel right. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. How often? As needed. As, As needed. needed. Yeah. So, again, a ton of value in our baseline die. So, our base die comes with that floating alignment system and that seating die that our competitors are only putting in their premium level, match grade, et cetera, dies. Right. And, and, you know, that's something that it's just the right way to do it. That's, it's just the right way to make a seating die. You're going to have a better finished product because of it. So, we put it in all of our dies. Yeah, ultimately a better mousetrap. That's what we're always striving for in engineering is to build a better mousetrap. So in that vein of building a better mousetrap, the next level of precision in your dies, you know, uh, Bradley and I, we've, we've done the PRS, NRL, precision rifle thing. Ben, you've dabbled in that too. Like, yep. So we're always trying to build a better mousetrap. That next level of precision in dies is our custom grade new dimension match grade. Right. So let's talk about what separates our match grade dies from our standard new dimension dies. Well, the match grade dies ultimately have the same finish, okay. right? Same elliptical expander. However, we include also a decap pin retainer because the major difference between a match grade die and a standard full length size die is the ability to control your neck tension. We obviously, when we build a full length die, we look at the SAMI spec of a cartridge neck, you know, so we know what a loaded round is and then we subtract so many thousands. Mm-hmm. But for guys that maybe turn their brass for accuracy, turn their necks, and they want 2,000s neck tension. This die has a removable bushing that you can purchase separately that will be sold in 1,000 increments that ultimately if I have a loaded neck at 338, I want 2,000s neck tension, I will put, and, and the reason I say 3,000 smaller bushing in is because of the brass spring back, okay. but I can buy one at 3,000 smaller, so I could buy a 335, a 336 and a 334 bushing and experiment with how neck tension affects my accuracy. Okay. And I can choose to run that elliptical expander in there to touch the insides of the neck or what we call a decap pin retainer, which is a very small diameter, just holds the decap pin in place, allows you to decap and it won't touch the inside of the neck. So you're only doing sizing on the outside of the neck at that point. Uh, on that, but on yeah. those dies, you're still, you're still full length sizing. Mm-hmm. You're still bumping the shoulder as you wish. You're just able to control the tension on your bullet by using different bushings in the in the in the die itself. Okay. Uh, the spindle in those also is floating. It's held in with a couple of E clips, so there's a little bit of play in it. So it uh, finds to, center to help find center. Correct. So the 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 sizing die incredibly different, 
Brandon, what's different on the seating die between a custom grade and a match grade? Well, you're going to have the alignment sleeve and the seating stem, of course, the, you know, applicable if you need a, a different one. Yeah. Um, but you're also going to get that micro adjust um, seating stem on top so you can uh, more finely tune your overall length. Okay. So really not, yeah. a, not a huge difference in the seating die, really. No. You get that same alignment collar, uh, the option of all those uh, seating stems for right. your specific bullet. And, you know, we can custom make you one if you prefer but you do get the factory installed micro adjust seating stem. Yeah, we put that on. Our, our We felt our seating die was, I, I, it was hard to improve on that system. Mm -hmm. So that's why we just included the same die in the match grade yeah. set with the addition of the micro adjust micrometer. Yeah. So obviously the match grade set, you know, that's, that's, that's a pretty top, top shelf product, but it only goes to show that our custom grade new dimension set, the standard set with that alignment system is really a, an incredible value. For sure. Now I want to bring this up because I don't I don't know, but we're sitting here with a, a tool and die engineer. Do you find value in a match grade die where you can select your bushing diameter for your neck tension? Do you prefer to get that elliptical expander? Do you is there value in pulling that expander back through to true the inside of the neck? Uh or is there is it you know, half a dozen in one and six in the other. I've, I, I'm pretty sure, Seth, that it's half a dozen in one and six in the other. Okay. Um, we all know through the years of reloading that a donut can form, and that's that little lump inside at the where the where the shoulder meets the neck of the cartridge inside the case can create a lump. Okay. Well, if you have that going on, and you're seating your bullet above that lump, in other words, your your uh, bearing surface boat tail, mm -hmm. your bearing surface doesn't get to that point then great. Um, you, you probably don't need to worry about pulling that expander through, but keep in mind, if you pull the expander back through, it moves that bump back to the outside of the case. Okay. So there's guys that prefer it one way. There's guys that prefer it the other. Um, there's reloaders that will uh, buy a donut cutter mm -hmm. and cut that material out of there. Okay. Um, match grade dies are great when you want to control the tension. There's pros and cons to them. Pro, I can control the tension. Some of the cons not real good for gas guns oh, um, okay. because there's a certain part with the way the die is designed and the radius on the bushing of the neck shoulder junction that can't be sized. It stays as fire. And for a gas gun where you need something to go into, into battery or an automatic, I need it to go into battery. It might not be the best choice unless you're willing to single feed them. Okay. I didn't, didn't realize that. Yeah. And you probably, you know, our standard set, has a minimum amount of, of uh, diameter, so you're going to get maximum neck tension. And in a semi-automatic, probably important to have. Yeah, very important. Yeah. Yep. So that's the match grade set, and I've used a ton of match grade sets. I have a ton of them. I find myself, no questions asked, still going to our our custom grade. Um, there are some instances where I like using an interchangeable bushing, but for the most part, I've kind of just have an I have no no qualms with running our custom grade new dimension set. Uh, however, on the stuff where I have, you know, high levels of precision in every capacity and my most accurate guns, I use the match grade set for that mm -hmm. neck tension, uh, controllability. For sure. Now from here, this is where we really start to diverge because these are factory produced, uh, incredible quality, incredible value, but we have a next level of performance and, and I don't know if it's, widely known or i don't know how widely it is known i mean we do advertise it but we have a complete custom shop from mm -hmm. start to finish and to me that's that's something that you see less and less and less especially over the last couple of years so you know brad i'm sure you get this on the phone a lot where somebody wants oh, i have this die but i really want this diameter of of expander or this right. that the other thing and you can just tell them. You know what? One stop, Ben. We, uh, we, you know, and they got a lot of questions and a lot of, uh, you know, how do Wild I do this? And... Wild catting is an easy one. You know, what's the best way to get there? And, and quite honestly, you know, getting them down to Ben and getting an answer, like it literally is, it might be hydraulic forming. It might be, you know what? There's a step. There's different ways you can do that. Uh, and, and a one stop shop with Ben. Yeah, and, and having been on that customer service team, it's so nice to know, like, well, I, I don't know how to make this wild cat. And, and if, if you can, I don't know what dies it takes. One call, 
and and then as project engineer you head up that custom division yeah so before we get into the rest of the stuff we do custom we've already talked about seating stems you can design a profile of a seating stem for for anything now what goes into a set of custom dies because now we're talking about customer supplied prints or customer supplied brass mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. goes into designing say a size die from start to finish okay well they all go through the basic process we talk to the customer um it might be somebody that wants to up the next level of our match grade die set they've established where they want their neck tension to be so i can build them a die with that neck tension and the advantage to it is that when we bore those dies they're bored in one well, several passes but with the same tool. So the concentricity between the neck and the body is probably even better of a step up over the match grade dies where that bushing can go in and out. It really is that next level. Once they've established, I want this neck tension, I can give that to them, the neck tension in the die. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the customer will call me and they'll say, you know, I have a wildcat. Um, We'll do the simple ones like a 243 Ackley Improved. And I'll talk to the customer. We'll talk about prices. Um, I make the, I don't make, I ask the customers to provide me some information because I truly believe that every, if it's a wildcat, it's not controlled by a company like Sammy or CIP, that it can be different. I can name it a 243 Ackley. You can name it a 243 Ackley and you can name it a 243 Ackley and all three might be different. I take that into account because when we, when I design them, depending on, I always ask, well, what are we going to do with this cartridge? Are you going to hunt with it? then I want to give them a little bit more clearance. If I'm going to use it for match or varmint shooting, I try to make it fit their chamber better. Because ultimately, if you've taken a case from this, fired in your chamber to this, I don't want to go all the way back to that. Right. You don't I want to stay just a little bit so it fits in again. Mm-hmm. I line with the bore better. My accuracy is better, ultimately. Okay, okay so that's, that's kind of the goal. Um, but we'll talk about what they want. Some want a full-length die set. Some choose to go with a match-grade die set. We can design both. Um, I ask the customers ultimately to send, if they have them, three fired cases and the chamber room we're drawing. That's really important because it's another, I, I feel like it's another step up in service because I can look at your fired cases and I can look at your chamber room we're drawing and say, perfect, or hey, something's not right here. Something's not right on this drawing. And because I think it's good to know for a wildcatter, and I also believe every other wildcatter that does a wildcat should obtain that drawing. Now, yeah. can we do it without the drawing? For sure. Then we have to have the fired cases. We can also build them with just the drawing and some parent cases. Provided the gunsmith follows the drawing, hits the headspace, the dies will work. Okay. We have some guys that want it. Typically, if you told me nothing and just say, hey, build me a custom set, I'm going to measure up your fired cases. I'm going to figure out what the shoulder angle. I'm going to set the die up to give you about a 6,000th headspace bump, and you can adjust that out by how much, how tight you screwed onto the shell holder. I'm going to set the die up with three thousandths on the shoulder, so one and a half per side. And at the base of the case, the body basically a three and three and a half thousandths squeeze. Um, and then if you didn't tell me anything, I'm probably going to go four thousandths below a loaded round. Um, some stuff, because we'll just pick one like 308. It's been out for many, many, many years. Mm-hmm. So we have to fit everybody's brass was a standard die. So you'll see some of those necks get size 10 below. Because we have to neck account diameter. for yep. all the different thicknesses of brass that are out there. Well, you sent me your brass. I can make that minimally, ultimately increasing your accuracy and increasing your case life. Because case is, uh, brass is a work hardening material, so we have to move that. Uh, the more times you move it back and forth, the less life you're going to have out of it. Mm-hmm. So we can really control that. Um, and then you'll see the wildcatters. He mentioned the hydraulic form dies. Um, for app Ackley, typically 40 degrees or 28 degrees for some of them. They'll take a cartridge like 30 out six, and we want to make an Ackley improved out of it. Or the more recent 280 Ackley that actually got approved into Sammy. Mm-hmm. That was originally a 280 Remington that they increased the body diameter at the shoulder and blew that shoulder into a 40 degree angle. It allowed more powder, more velocity on the bullet. We can create you a die that will squeeze on the neck of an original 280 comes with a special shell holder without a hole in it you take your 280 brass and you put a spent primer in it you fill that brass full of water run it up into the die and it puts a squeeze on the neck which is my seal we run a ram down in there and smack that thing with a hammer 
and it'll blow that case out and shoulder forward, and then it'll hold the full Ackley charge. Um, That's the reason, pretty remarkable. Well, yeah, and I think it pays for itself, especially now. Let's find primers and powder <laughs> And fire yeah, form those cases because you can fire form if that's your choice. Yeah. But I always ask how much are you going to shoot? Is fire forming 20 of them enough to last you a lifetime? Then it's probably not worth buying a hydraulic form. But if you're going to shoot it a lot, the $198 that you pay for a, a hydraulic form die is well worth the money. You can do it in your garage. You don't have to go to the range uh, to fire form any ammo. So, yeah. And yeah, barrel life, primers. Yeah, primers Absolutely. are nine or ten cents a pop right now. Sure, and then you've got wildcatters that go a whole another level, and they say, "No, no, no, my mine is a three hundred wind mag that I shortened two hundred and fifty thousandths. I put a forty degree shoulder on it, and I want a long neck." Okay, now we have to push, we have to form the brass back and create dies that will make that case from what we have. So we set okay. up a die set that'll form that shoulder back at thirty degree angles. We push the shoulder back in steps because we know it's successful. Uh, many, many cartridges, you can't just shove that brass through there. You only end up wrinkled or caved in. So we go in 50,000 increments, get down to that point. We can build um, file-type trim dies. So the excess brass that's sticking out the top, you can take with a hacksaw and just <laughs> file it smooth, and it comes out to length. Uh, then the last step could be the hydraulic form that blows it out. We can pretty much do anything custom that your heart desires if you see some way to go into accuracy um wow. another another reason for the custom shop and i don't mean to take the whole show here but yeah another reason for the custom shop is let's think about dad's old 45 100 p body go try to find a set of dice for that thing we do it okay we'll have you send me the cases which sometimes is difficult sometimes we have to do some research tell you okay the parent is this if we size it through this we might be able to get one case fired so that i can measure up what your chamber looks like and make a die to fit it um, so that's, that, that gets you some of these antiques so you can still go out and enjoy them. Yeah. I and didn't think of it that way. When I think custom shop, I think ultra precision, long range, moving shoulders and up, down and whatever. But yeah, there's a vintage aspect to oh, it Oh, absolutely. Too. Absolutely. And, and then there's folks that, uh, there's folks that are PRS shooters and they want to shoot a 308. They're not particular, but they're so finite with their reloading. A factory 308 doesn't fit their chamber well. So I'll build them a hydraulic form die that they can run that standard 308 brass through to blow the shoulder forward like it was a fired case. Then they can come back with their full length die, touch it right where they want to so it fits their chamber perfectly mm -hmm. at the first fire. Yeah, that's so next there's, level. Yeah, there's all kinds of things we can do. Yeah. Well, in that, in that scenario, like you mentioned 308, gosh, I mean. You look at the 308 Winchester, there's the original Sammy approved 308 Winchester. And then there's a laundry list, the 1997 Palma Reamer, the, oh, yeah. the tactical Reamer, the match Reamer. Right. The, and different throat lengths and, and whatever. So there's all these different chamber dimensions uh, off of one Sammy approved cartridge and with a custom shop like that. Correct. It's a non-issue. And, and I guess the easiest way to lay this out if I go nerdy on you because I'm an engineer and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. But let's think about Sammy, and, and this is available to anybody out there on Sammy's pet cartridge. You can go to Sammy.org. Uh, there's a tab there. You click chamber and cartridge drawings. You can look, and usually the cartridge drawings on the top, the chamber drawings on the bottom, and all the dimensions are there. But if we just pick one on the shoulder, say a 308, Sammy always gives you max case and minimum chamber, okay? Well, max case might be, let's just say it's 450. I don't know the number off my head, but I'm just going to say 450 at the shoulder. And then if you look over in the side, it'll give you your tolerances. All, all machining requires a tolerance, okay? Mm -hmm. So we can make that case, that dimension as a max. And then over here, it says all di diameters, unless otherwise specified, minus 8,000. So I can have a 454 or I can have a 446 diameter there that's, all set, all passes. Yep, everything's everything's groovy. Right. Now when I look at chamber, that 445 dimension that I was talking about, or did I say, yeah, 454, I don't know what I said. But it's, it's usually plus one over max case so that everything will always fit. If I have a max case, it'll always fit in a min-spec chamber. It's usually about a thou bigger. So 454, so that chamber's 455. Same thing, if I look over on the side... It's gonna Instead of minus, it there. says, unless otherwise notified, all diameters are plus two. So now how you can see how a perfect fit of one thousandths, if I take that 454 to 457, 
and then I have a min spec case at 446, that 1,000 just turned into 11. Yeah. So which, huge mm-hmm. advantage over being able to use a, a custom die yep. so that I don't have to take it back down to fit that min spec chamber if I have a max spec case. And for those guys that have some min spec cases, they're trying to shoot accurate out of their first time of the rifle to do some sort of a hydraulic form to blow it out to prevent having a fire form. That's remarkable. And that's, yeah. that's, that's something that I've always thought was cool that we do have an absolute turnkey custom shop. You can dream it, we can do it. And, and over the last couple of years, that seems to be more and more manufacturers kind of getting away from that or shrinking that division just because things are going crazy in the firearms industry and the ammunition industry right now, obviously. Uh, but we're still doing that. And I hate to put you on the spot like this, Ben, but uh, doing something completely custom, it all takes time. Do you have an estimated of what your timelines typically look like? Yeah, right now, and it all depends on, uh, obviously, the times. You know, We yeah. run these dies through the same machines that run these dies. Production okay? dies. Production sure. dies. Uh, they're done with a little different process, boring versus reaming. Um, but uh, right now, we're running about 16 weeks. I tell folks 16 weeks. We like to beat that. And sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I mean, there's dies that we have to, uh, we've got, I've got one customer that um, wanted dies. He determined that his six PPC, as it work hardened, as he sized, he needed to go a couple tenths smaller with the die and a couple tenths smaller. He wanted a series of four dies in, and I had to carry them to the point zero 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 one tolerance, four dies in two tenths increments smaller. And then when they got to the fourth die where his brass still fit in his chamber, after that, then he threw the brass away. (laughs) And we have to burn those dies. We can't turn that tolerance. So we use our EDM machine, the same machine that we'll make carbide bullet dies with, and burn them. (laughs) Wow. Um, So like you said, the sky's the limit there. Um, Obviously, I have to work that through a machine whose workload is a lot longer. And so I try to tell them up front that that's going to take quite a bit longer to get that to get that job. Well, where else are you going to get that? Where else are you going to get somebody that has an EDM to mm-hmm. to burn dies right to that level of of consistency? Yeah. That's remarkable. There's even another level that we hadn't mentioned yet and that's what I call what we term contract dies. Okay. Those yeah. are your small startups. Uh, let's just name one, the 8.6 blackout. It's probably yeah. becoming pretty popular right now. Sure, I've heard about um, it. they called in. I set up a die set. I actually give it a Hornady number. Um, we does, we order reamers for those like we would our standard dies. They have to have a minimum order of 25 and then they get them at a different price rather than the custom price. That's what we call contract price. They order 25 and we exclusively sell those to those. So when somebody calls wanting a die, I send them to them to mm. get their die set. So that's a, that's another level of service that we can provide. Yeah. So yeah, as a, as a smaller company or, or, or a company that's trying to get, you know, a cartridge you know, to, on some mainstream popularity, yeah. you can have, you know, gr- a, a large sum of dies produced, uh, with, yeah, with a Hornady, of, you know, a number. There's a lot start, started like that. Uh, um, most recently the six GT. Yeah. There you started go. as a contract set. Now it's moved into the official set because it's a Sammy approved cartridge now. So it's, it's, the, it's a place to start. Yep. That is awesome. So that's all things dies from the beginning to absolutely everything and one thing that that i have a lot of personal pride in because i worked in the division that brad's in currently is that these dies come with a warranty so it's not like you know you're getting you know you buy our our custom grade new dimension set and and you know see you later yeah Yeah, see you later what's our warranty on these products um manufacturer defects uh i don't know if i'm spelling that or saying that absolutely correctly but you know, something that we did in the process. So if a guy gets it and something runs at one time through a die, something broke, you know, they call us up. And, and the common one is, like I said before, the, the zip spindle lock, not getting that thing set. Yeah. You know, we're, we're pretty lenient. We, you know, try to discourage guys from being, you know, calling in often. But, you know, for the most part, we take care of anything that they have a problem with. Spins, you know, the zip spindle being bent, um, retaining ring coming off, uh, so, yeah, pretty basic stuff, but we take care of them. Yeah, and that's a lifetime warranty. That lifetime. is a lifetime warranty. You get you get incredible value. You have the the ability to work with a complete custom shop, and you get a lifetime warranty 
uh, for the length of the die, for the lifetime of the die, you get a warranty on it. And that's, that's pretty remarkable. And again, I've, I've had a lot of red on my reloading bench and we have a dog in the race cause we work here. But prior to that growing up, that's what we always had around. And, mm-hmm. and now that I've had the ability to, to see and use a lot of different dies in the industry, there are a lot of great dies in the industry, oh, yeah. but yeah. I would put our dies right up there with the best of them. I sure would. I sure would. That lifetime warranty carries into our presses too. Yeah. I mean, we don't just stop it at dies. It's in our presses as well. So the, the whole combination of everything, um, I think that's huge. I mean, wouldn't you like to buy a car that was lifetime warranty yeah, that right. used for 50 years? Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and, and exactly. And to touch on it, guys that have been reloading for years, they finally get into the lock and load system and they were threading their dies down every single time in the old style uh, presses. And they just some small key concepts to get it, and what do you know? They got into our progressive press, and something jammed. They broke a paw, or they broke an index wheel, or something small like that. You just, you know, help them understand yeah. where they're going with it, and tell so, us, and we send you another yeah. part. Yeah. So for for the customer uh, that that does or maybe doesn't have our product just yet, how do they get a hold of you guys up in the technical services area? Call our 800 number. Um, there's only three options. Um, and we're option three up there, We're option three for technical services and small group of guys. And honestly, a lot of this is, uh, how do I? New new reloaders, especially the last couple of years, my goodness. Um, reloading on these dies to the basics, to the match grade, which, which die set do I get into? A lot of times I don't even stress it. It's, it's, you got to start, you got to crawl before you walk, um, so on and so forth. But it, you, you're getting a preference. Uh, that rabbit hole will go as deep as you want it to. As deep as your pocket boots allow. Yeah. That's tip, yeah, typical with anything here, guns. Or you can go here and it never yeah. stops. Yeah. I'm always learning. I think you yes, guys could attest. Absolutely. Like, wow, I never knew that. Let's figure that out. And I, and I've been doing dyes themselves for Hornady for 15 years and I'm still Wow. Yeah. You got to have neat. that mindset. That was neat. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do that again. So that you is, can't, you can't, any customer that calls up, you know, you, you got to have, you're learning always. Yeah. And, and that's, you got to have that mind, especially when you're reloading, got to have that. Yep. Yeah. And I, I, one thing just to go again, tangential here to reloading dies, I'm, I'm still super, uh, uh, adamant that we have that technical services team and I want our customers to know about it and to use it because yeah, if you break apart or, you know, you need, you know, yeah, you need some customer service with something, that's what they're there for. But that group of guys up there, all of you guys hunt, all of you shoot, all of you reload. I think most of you shoot competitively and there's value in all of those experiences. And you guys have that eternal student type mindset. Mm-hmm. And so if, if you got a question on, ah, I'm building this thing and I don't know about what twist rate, or I want to use these bullets and you know, what kind of barrel length and twist rate and, and God, what, what would you guys do? What bullet would you use for this hunt that I have coming up or whatever? That's, yeah. that's your guys' specialty. And you know what? There's often guys will call up and have a question. I don't know it. We, I never, I will never know it all. And it's like, you know what? We've got the, we've got a great facility that have a ton of people. If I don't know what I'm talking about, Ben's an awesome source. Right. You know, with a lot of questions that guys have, um, you know, we, we've got, I don't know how many years of experience upstairs, but combined total. Yeah. yeah if, if we don't know, we'll admit it and we'll try to get an answer. Yeah. We're not going to blow smoke. We'll yeah, tell you, no. you know what? I don't know that, but let me get your number. I'm going to find you an answer and I'll get back to you. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's a, a, a great, it was a great product or a great division for me to start in. It's a great division to, to have as a company Yeah. because again, it's that next level just with dies. There's, you know, there's the next level of sure. performance. This is just that next level of customer care right. is having somebody technically savvy who knows what you're talking about, who has very likely done exactly what you're talking about and can relate. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just remarkable. What now, is that? Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30? Am I saying that right? 8.30 to 4.30. Yeah, Central, Central. Time. So, yep. I mean, we're there every awesome. day for you. Now, on the custom division, how yeah. do we get a hold of Ben? If we want, to, we want to design something real wacky, how do we talk to you? That's pretty simple. Call the 800 number, ask for Ben. Ben and custom dies. Ben and custom dies okay. dialed or skip that and dial two six one. That's me. Okay. I can't promise someone to answer it every time because I'm pretty busy, but uh I've I've been two weeks behind on voicemails, just so you know. But if you're yeah. patient, I definitely will yeah. get back to you. Well, and at the end of the day, if you're getting a completely turnkey custom set of dies and you're estimating sixteen weeks, yeah, you're you're busy. Because <laughs> what we are, and, and many other manufacturers are turning them our way too. They call them for a custom die. Well, call Ben at Hornady. 
uh, we've yep. kind of gotten out of that. Um, so uh, we're getting an influx of calls. I was surprised um, to see it just just continually growing. It's getting bigger. I think the more word That's gets great. out there and the more accuracy we can do, I think the push for PRS um, has got a lot more a lot more folks thinking about, hey, how can we make this more accurate? It's it's starting to shift from how do we do this cheaper mm-hmm. to no, how do we do this more accurately? Yeah, I'm starting to see that shift with the push for long range, the long low jive bullets, and everything else. Now you still got your cheaper guys, and I always tell them it's no, you never want to give up part of that budget because your wife's going to go buy more purses, right? <laughs> G- reloading allows you to shoot more not save money just shoot more yeah with the yeah. same budget right yeah there we go right yeah you're not saving money you're just shooting more it's exactly a good, exactly. good exactly. way to look at it awesome well gentlemen thanks for for shooting the breeze with me today i've i've learned some uh again always always a a great chance to sit down and talk with with you folks and our reloading dice top shelf product tons of value custom shop sky's mm-hmm. the limit technical service uh we're there for you if you need help so again uh thanks for sitting down with me been a pleasure, Seth. Absolutely. Awesome, guys. Thanks for listening to another episode, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.